Hey everybody, welcome into Siren Records Monterey. It's Fresh Catch Friday and Cass is here and I'm here. And uh, God, it's been a week and a half, hasn't it? Sure but has. we have some good stuff to share with you today. And um, we're gonna start with our picks of the week as always. Cass kicks us off and he's gonna tell us what's good. All right, I have this new Drouse album, Light Mirror. Um, Drouse is a one man project uh, by the man Kyle Bates, his name is. <coughs> And this is his third studio album. He signed to the label Flenzer, one of my favorite record labels based in San Francisco. They have a lot of great, like, dark, depressing, weird, you know, sometimes shoegazy, sometimes black metal infused bands on their roster. And um, they just signed, or Drouse just signed them a couple years ago and he put out his second album on their label. And um, yeah, basically, like I said, very shoegazy, but uh, not like old school shoegaze. You can definitely hear like influences from like Slow Dive, and even some influences from Low. But uh, it definitely has that modern shoegaze sound where it's like, well, I guess there's different types of modern shoegaze, but basically it's very dark and kind of bleak. It's not like the happy, dreamy shoegaze a lot of people know very well. It's very depressing. The lyrics are very morbid sometimes. But uh, it's complemented with these very reverby guitars, very breathy vocals. So, pretty cool. Sometimes there's some heavy, like, doomy sort of riffs on here, too. And uh, definitely reminds me of uh, one of their label mates, Have a Nice Life, quite a bit. One of my favorite bands. So, check this out. It's very good. It's a pretty long album, too. I'd say it's almost like an hour. But um, it doesn't uh, overstay its welcome. It's a very relaxing album. I mean, if you dig into the lyrics, it's probably going to make you a little... A little emotional but uh, if you just have it on it's not like a sleep or anything it's very very uh what's the word dynamic shoegaze album i will say so check it out they're very good and shout out to flenzer yet again for being just one of the best labels boy you're all over the place with those labels i don't know what's going to happen to you because you keep uh, <laughs> dividing your loyalty you got too many I know. <laughs> yeah, sport between don't those know what you got i at bones. least stick to two two basic three maybe but mm, anyway all right my pick for you this week is the rolling stones rock and roll circus on abco and uh this is uh from 1968 this is the first time that this has been on vinyl and um, they hosted Rock and Roll Circus in December of 1968. The way it started was um, they were about to put out Beggar's Banquet and Mick thought he wanted to do something other than just the regular kind of promo, promo hype, hype leading up to it. So he gets this idea to, you know, collect a bunch of his friends and have this um, made for the BBC uh, special that was the Rock and Roll Circus. Well. What happened was they started filming it at like two o'clock in the afternoon on one day and it just kept going into the next day um, at like five in the morning. So they burned through, they, it was like an invited audience thing, but they burned through one audience completely exhausted them. So they had to bring in new people and the musicians were of course, you know, uh, hanging out and they were partying late. So the last few performances were maybe not as good as they could have been and um, I think when Mick was reviewing the footage he actually was very disappointed in the way that the stones came off because they were completely usurped by the likes of Taj Mahal and the Who and that didn't bode well so he was really disappointed and and the thing about it that was kind of a bummer was Mick was the one that was keeping it going and you'll see if you ever get to see the, the film of this um, he's he's always there he keeps going but you know he was always that way businessman he knows what time it is and he's gonna get it done but everybody else Brian Jones was it was his last public performance with the stones oh, he wow. died seven months after this and um, you know even at the time he he didn't even know what was going on you know it was almost it's kind of sad um, he like I think Ian Anderson sort of uh, was being interviewed and said something to that effect and that like oh he can't even tune his own guitar and of course you know the press was all over that and it didn't really go down a storm with Mick either so I think Ian Anderson had to make a incredible apologies to the office after that yeah. <laughs> well anyway um, so yeah um, so there's an all-star lineup on this is not only the who but there was Yoko Ono and Jethro Tull Taj Mahal Marianne Faithful nice. Um, and and their impromptu supergroup that was called the Dirty Mac that comprised John Lennon, Keith Richards, Eric Clapton, and uh, yeah. So the guy that filmed this, his name was uh, Michael Lindsay Hogg, and he also is the guy that filmed Let It Be. 
So um, he, you know, the, it was like I said, this planned BBC special that never saw the light of day. I think then finally until 1996 um, it was released, but this is the first time on vinyl and you get three discs, three vinyl discs. It's not colored vinyl or anything super special like that, but um, uh, it's got 28 tracks remastered and remixed in high resolution audio stereo with all the original performances plus never before released performances by Taj Mahal and two newly discovered audio performances by that Dirty Mac um, supergroup. So this is really great if you're um, you know, a Stones uh, collector or a purist and you kind of want to have everything. This is $53.95, which really isn't bad for three records. Um, you don't get anything. It's just the three records. You don't get like the booklet or anything. I think there's a CD version that's pretty deluxe that you do get like a big booklet with it, but not for the vinyl. So, but anyway, it is my pick and uh, yeah, come on and get that if you're uh, if you're a big Stones fan like me and you want to you wanna hear all this stuff, okay? All right, now yeah, before we get into our other things, we have like each got a, a pick, um, one, that we're gonna go into a little more detail and then we're just gonna blast through all this other stuff, okay? So you got something else you wanna talk about? Yeah, so I kept uh, mentioning this each week because it kept being late on our uh, shipments and whatnot, but the new Black Mountain album, mm -hmm. Destroyer, um, yeah, I was waiting quite some time for this to come out. It's been three years since Black Mountain had an album, or has had an album out. Black Mountain, they're from Vancouver. They're like a psychedelic rock, kind of 70s, 60s throwback sort of sound. But uh, they definitely incorporate some of the new psych sounds of today as well. Um, their last album was super, uh, very 60s acid rock sounding. It's pretty good, but a little trippy. Uh, very, some of those tracks were just very uh, experimental, very like those early, late 60s bands that were just, you know, making completely trippy music just for taking drugs. So it was a bit much for me, but this album, definitely more on the side of like, um, maybe 70s, like Judas Priest, that's 70s, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're right, it is, yeah. I think so, some yeah. heavy, like, just heavy metal influences on this one, like Sabbath, and like, like I said, Judas Priest, and um, very interesting, uh, kind of mix of that sound with like their old psych sound from the 60s and um, it's pretty good honestly I'm a huge fan of this band in general and they recently uh, switched their singer their female singer they had a uh, the main guy I can't remember his name he does like all the songwriting guitar and vocals and they had a girl doing vocals for their first four albums but they recently got the singer of Sleepy Sun to do their uh, or to be like the new replacement I guess I don't know why the other girl left but um she sounds great on here as well. Very similar style to the last girl as well. Very uh, Janis Joplin sort of 60s sound mixed with his vocals. So it's it's pretty good. And uh, cover's beautiful. It's on white vinyl. Um, highly recommend the track Boogie Lover. Very, very good track. These guys are great. It's on Jag Jaguar. Great label. Um, and it's 19.95. So good deal. Pick it up if you're into psych rock. Yeah. Don't tell me, Jag Jaguar, one of your favorite labels. Actually, I don't know much about them. Oh, I like them a lot. I could make that argument. Oh, okay. Well, I'll take them then because I, I like them quite a lot. Okay. So for my other thing, I'm kind of like cast this week. I um, This was technically out last week, but I just wanted to bring it up because it's so good. This is the Go To Beds and it's uh, Debt Begins at 30 and it's on Sub Pop, who we love very much. Yes. And this is the third album from uh, the go to beds who are from Pittsburgh and instead of getting into the studio with each other They decided to invite some friends along and uh, on every track. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's exactly right Every track on this record features a guest spot So the idea is generally, you know, they do that kind of stuff in hip-hop and jazz and electronic circles But not so much in punk um, True. but um, uh, Anyway, it, it works really well here and uh, after each track, it, you know, is a different, like I said, vocalist or musician, and it's kind of, uh, on your first listen, maybe you're thinking that's kind of jarring and it doesn't quite work, but if you stay with it, and you know, it's a grower, so um, after a couple, it starts to click and you realize that it's kind of a stroke of genius that they did this, you know? Um, this is the loser edition that we've got here, and that means it's on orange vinyl, so that's another uh, little bonus. Um, so anyway, the guitars are like, you know, they're slightly abrasive, but they're catchy. And the bass is like right where you need it. It holds each track and the drums are flawless on this. Um, overall, there's like kind of a, a Sonic Youth vibe going on here. And um, it's really evident on the album opener, which is called 
Clacker the Hound and Evan Richards from the City Buses and Rob Henry from Kim Fook are the guests here. Um, Dross opens with all this kind of feedback and broody guitars um, uh, and Bob Nastanovich of Pavement and Silver Jews is a special guest here and you can really, yeah, you can really hear Pavement's shadow looming large over Dross. So um, poor people are revolting, sees Gerard Klos Kosloy who's 12XU label is putting this out. So um, up here they kind of tell you some of the guests. You've got um, Nastanovich from Pavement, uh, Tim Midyet from Silkworm, Rob Henry from Kim Fook, uh, Tracy Wilson, Positive No, Victoria Ruiz, Downtown Boys. Um, anyway, in the last one here, it's kind of funny, and they say an almost Mark Arm from the Sub Pop Warehouse. So we were just talking about that this morning, how when you get your shipment from sub pop you've got mark arm from mud, mud honey is like the return address on there so he's packing up your orders for you isn't that weird cool. but anyway so I'm, I'm curious to know what that means and almost mark arm but anyway this is a great record you guys it's 1995 check them out and uh get the orange vinyl get the loser edition because it's just uh that much more special anyway that's the go to bed all right cool. um now we're gonna move into this other thing but first of all um cass and i were remiss last week because we didn't spend a lot of uh, time talking about Rory Gallagher blues and uh, a lot of people really kind of wanted to know something about that record now we are sold out so I can't physically show it here because until they come back in but if you you guys remember what that looked like because we did show it last week but anyway this is a new Rory Gallagher career spanning collection um, I guess he was uh, his favorite um, genre of music was blues and uh, so anyway this was released last week through chess UME. Um, the material is drawn from the vaults of the Gallagher's Estates uh, tape archive and that features rare unreleased recordings from him playing his favorite blues material. Um, previously unreleased tracks, special guest sessions with legendary blues artists like Muddy Waters and Albert King and uh, Lost Radio sec Sessions. Um, it uncovers his love of the blues throughout his solo career. Now, um, if you get the deluxe CD edition, there's three discs and one is electric blues, one is acoustic blues, and one is live blues. But in the vinyl form, you know, last week when I said to you this should be on colored vinyl, actually there is a two, a double blue vinyl oh, okay. version you can get. Um, don't know if we're gonna be able to get that in because I think the ones we got last week were black and so, we may not be able to get that. But anyway, I just want to let you know that it is out there. Um, so anyway, he recorded solo albums through the 70s and 80s. Uh, after forming the band Taste late in the 60s, um, his albums have sold over 30 million copies worldwide. Um, anyway, in the later years of his life, he developed a phobia of flying, but to overcome this, he was prescribed a very heavy sedative. And anyway, what it did over time combined with uh, alcohol abuse, it really destroyed his liver. So the only way for or for him, they when once he was diagnosed, they said they had to give him a liver transplant, which they did, but sadly he um, got a staph infection and it, it failed. And uh, so he died in June of 1995 at the age of 47. And he was not married and he had no children, but his legacy lives on. And so if you wanna pick that up, it's a nice, uh, you know, overview of all his the, the music he loved to play the most. So there you go. Okay, so I hope that that fills everybody in that wanted to know more about that release and uh, gives you a little more insight to what was that was all about. I'm sorry I don't have the physical copy to show you right now, but it's coming back. All right, so to get to this week's um, extras, I'm gonna pass them in two different piles to Cass over here. Okay. And we are just gonna go through And I think just to mess with me, Cass changed the font on my sheets and made it tiny. So, hmm, we're gonna be uh, Good luck. all right. Yuck it up while you can, there, kid. Okay. First of all, these are reissues on. A lot of these are gonna be reissues on colored vinyl that haven't been available or only through special, um, like, uh, label only ordering systems. And uh, anyway, we've got access to some of this stuff now. So there's pretty exciting stuff this week and next week. So we're gonna start off with Abba Gold, and yep, it's on uh, colored vinyl, and it's probably gold vinyl, I would imagine. Two LPs for $37.95. Right. Now, this is the Beach Boys with the Royal Philharmonic, and this is orange vinyl, two LPs for $28.95. Right. Uh, we have Black Sabbath, 13, colored vinyl, but I don't know what color. Do, do those stickers say? Orange vinyl. It's orange, thank you. $25.95. 
You know how I hate it when I don't know what color the vinyl is, right? <laughs> okay, Oops. now we, we it does irk me. Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet on red vinyl, $27.95. Okay. Um, Boogie, Everything Is For Sale LP, this is $21.95. Um, is, that's that's, a, that's just, just a, a new release, yeah. right? Okay. And then we've got Eric Church, Caught in the Act, live. This is blue vinyl, and that is $21.95. Is that just one LP? It's two, two LPs. Two. Yeah, I was gonna say for a live show, probably should be. Okay, John Coltrane, A Love Supreme, Translucent Smoke Vinyl, $27.95. Yeah, you know, great. there must be like four or five versions of A Love Supreme available now, right? I swear, there's yeah. just like, yeah, I think we've got at least six. This is probably the one to pick up, though. Pretty well, cool color. You know, I think that there is one on blue vinyl somewhere, too. There is, yeah. yeah. Okay. All it's right. One, now we've got cranberries. Everybody else is doing it. I think uh, initially this didn't this <laughs> come out. Two versions of this, too. Yeah, I think it came out on green vinyl at one point. Or was that like a later album no, that, of theirs? That, was, it, that yeah. was this one? Anyway, this one's on clear. It's $25.95. Rest in peace. Little, yes, a little more rare. Now we've got uh, Miles Davis, The Complete Birth of Cool, over two LPs for $33.95. That's okay. probably a nice little item there. Yeah, I know, it's kind of random. It's like no, that doesn't say, no, it's not colored, okay. Now we've got uh, Def Leppard Vault, The Best, on colored vinyl, two LPs, $28.95. How many times is this gonna be a new release? <laughs> is this on like, the third round They're now? fooling us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we've got DJ Shadow, uh, introducing, and this is on blue vinyl. It's two LPs, twenty five ninety five. That's another good one. Yeah, Definitely that's a great one. Pick that up. Okay, now we've got Duffy Rock Fairy colored vinyl on twenty five or for twenty five ninety five. She was hot for about a minute, right? I don't know who she is. Oh, White yeah. vinyl, though. Yeah, she had some big single. I forget which one it was, but yeah, no, I thought she was going to be doing more, but I haven't heard from her in long time now so there you go now you can get it on colored vinyl but we don't know what color oh white vinyl. white thank you okay now we've got the eagles of death metal um this is uh eodm presents boots electric 180 gram 22.95 of course that's the muddy waters album i think they're i think it's just like muddy waters covers or something like oh, that oh wow interesting I'm pretty sure it's a Muddy Waters album. Something to do with that. All right, Eagles of Death Metal, of course, featuring the impossibly handsome Josh Homme. Just had to put that in there. Occasionally drumming for them. <laughs> okay. Eminem, the Eminem show on colored vinyl. Any indication on that? Um, doesn't say actually. No sticker at all. All right. So. Two LPs, twenty-five ninety-five. Okay. Lots of noise coming up here. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, mm -hmm. Nope. Fetid, sleep, right. sleeping corporal mess, corporeal mess, twenty-one ninety-five. That looks really good. Okay, the twenty bucks spin. <laughs> the Fratelli's Costello music on red vinyl, twenty-six ninety-five. Nice. Genesis seconds out, two LPs, twenty-eight ninety-five. Cool. Ghosts of the Forest, self-titled, two LPs, twenty-six ninety-five. Oh, the House of Love. She paints words in red, white vinyl. Twenty-two ninety-five. Gosh, I love that band. Heard of them? Wow, so great. All right, Janet Jackson Control for seventeen ninety-five. Just a reissue. I don't think that's colored or anything. Just uh, mm -mm. I'm surprised that actually that that hasn't been in print because you know it's a huge record for her. Yeah, it really was. All right, Juice World Death Race for Love, two LPs, twenty-seven ninety-five. That's just a straight-up new release, too, right? Yeah. Came out a couple months ago, but shout out to Juice World. Okay. I love him. Okay, let's give you the second pile here. I got what's what. Yeah. Oh. All right. Jeez. This week. I know. Okay. Ready? We got Charles Lloyd, Voice in the Night, two LPs, thirty-three ninety-five. We have Leonard Skinner collected the best on gold vinyl, two LPs, thirty-one ninety-five. Okay. We got Maroon Five songs about Jane on red vinyl. Should have been maroon vinyl, don't you think? They got close, but mm. not quite. twenty twenty-five ninety-five for that one. Okay. Now we got John Mellencamp, the best that I could do, seventy-eight to eighty-eight. Now this has already been a new release, but this is on gold vinyl. Uh, $25.95, I guess it's just the best he could do. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, now we got the Moody Blues in Search of the Lost Chord on Splatter Vinyl, twenty-five ninety-five, right. and it's so nice that we had to show it to you because this is just stunning. Moody but look cool. at that. It's a good one. Actually, yeah, go up further because it's just so great. Isn't that cool? I love that. So That's a good one. that one's going to be good album too. twenty-five ninety-five. All right. All right. Now we've got uh, James Morrison Undiscovered on Green Vinyl for twenty five ninety five, nice. and he's uh, oh. that's just a new release too, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Mountain Man sings John Denver. What is that? Here. Oh, it's a seven inch for six ninety five. Okay. Mountain Men is in fact three girls in a band. Okay. Just so you know. <laughs> John Powell, How to Train Your Dragon Picture Disc, 10 inch, it's $22.95. Okay, and then we have Rich the Kid, World is Yours, two, uh, two LPs, $21.95, is that two LPs? No, it's not, it's That's one LP. One. Yeah. What's the two doing there? Oh, it's Is that part two, of the title? Album, yeah. World is Yours, too? I believe okay. so. Okay, makes sense. Santana, Africa Speaks, two LPs, $24.95. Not a new thing. Oh, All right. The soundtrack, Ain't Too Proud, Temptations, two LPs, $22.95. All right. All the temptations you could ask for. Uh, soundtrack to Marvelous Mrs. Mizell, season two. I think we did have season one at one point, right? We did, yeah. There's season two for you, $17.95. Okay. Now we've got Sting, My Songs, two LPs, $37.95. I don't know. Pretentious much? <laughs> <laughs> Let's guess if it's picture of him on the cover. Of course there <laughs> of course is. Of course there is. All right, James Taylor, one man band, two LPs, $27.95. Nice. And another Temptations, Cloud Nine on Fuchsia Clear this Cloud Vinyl, yes. $23.95. Yeah, that looks amazing. So I think I'd prefer that over the soundtrack, actually, yeah. of course, because it's going to be the real deal. All right, and we've got U2, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb on Red Vinyl for $25.95. Too. We've got you 2 the Unforgettable Fire on just this colored vinyl. Yeah, uh, wine vinyl. Wine vinyl uh, for twenty five ninety five. Cool. I think next week there's a couple more U2 colored vinyl um, back catalog ones too that we'll have for you. Um, this is Keith Urban, Greatest Hits, Nineteen Kids. Ooh. What is? What do you mean Nineteen Kids? What is that about? Nineteen. So it says no. Eighteen kids, and it crosses out. Says nineteen kids. Nineteen. So. Oh, nineteen of his songs. He's calling his songs kids. Is that what? It's special. Uh, oh, it's weird. Twenty-two ninety-five for two LPs. Okay. He's alluding to something. Okay. Not sure what though. Velvet Underground, nineteen sixty-nine on blue vinyl, two LPs, thirty-nine ninety-five. What? Worth it. Wow. Get it. Okay. Um, Way down, Wanderers, Illusions on magenta colored vinyl. And this is 1995, and that's a new release uh, this this week as well. Okay, now we've got nice. the Amy Winehouse Frank on pink vinyl, two LPs, 37.95, which looks awesome. It does. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty good. Okay, so next week there's going to be more of that kind of stuff. Those reissues with the special colors. I mean, we both had our eye on the Verve, um, which Verve Urban is it? Hymns, yes, yes. On, on green vinyl. We'll so, that. oh, that's going to be a beauty. But anyway, more stuff like that to come. Um, oh, there's there's good stuff next week. We got some real exciting things. Um, a lot of good new releases too, besides this colored vinyl stuff. Oh next yeah, it's going to be really great. Next week so. is going to be pretty great. I think Look we already we that. already have our hopefuls I think picked. We already don't know we? what we're doing. Yeah. yeah, it's actually not too hard to figure out if you if you knew what we know. But anyway, you will next week. And uh, all right, so we're going to wrap it up and. Uh, this weekend, 4 to 12, I, or 12 to 4, 4 to 12, that'd be great if we opened at 4 a.m. until noon. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be 12 to 4. I know that at some point it's going to change to 6, and I think you're, it's the triumphant return of Cassidy on Sunday, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Guest so, appearance. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like that's the time to come in. Um, yeah, all right. So you went and saw a band, what, you saw Babe Rainbow last Babe night. Babe Rainbow last night, and yeah. our, our homies, the uh, Shoobies, opened up for them. Yeah, the Shoobs. yeah. Shout out to the Shoobs. Yes. They're from PG, right? Yes, so, and they're wonderful. They're doing big things. Mm -hmm. They are. And it's, uh, that's, that was nice that you got to see that too. That's really cool. So I'm going to go and head off and see Jackie Green tonight and uh, check him out. And then tomorrow, I'm going to head to Berkeley and see. 
the another impossibly handsome Father John Misty, and like for what? It's my sixth time seeing him, something like that. I'm, Jeez. But I don't get tired of Still it. Still no pictures of him though. Not with him, no. Just I'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak to the back. <laughs> uh, I don't do the back, you know that. So, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, come and see Cass on Sunday if you're in and around town. If you're a local yokel, he will be happy to uh, engage you in some music chit chat. Okay, so um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. I hope this hasn't spun out too long, and uh, we'll we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.